Good morning, mini diehards. This is Peter, your automotive fanatic, coming at you with another easy DIY for the Mini Cooper. Today, what my task is, is going to be replacing the rear brake pads on the Mini Countryman. I kid you not, the change of the pads on the Mini Cooper is literally a 15 minute job and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that shortly. Here we are guys for another DIY on the Mini Cooper and as I had alluded earlier the rear brake pad change on the Mini Cooper is a very simplified process. It involves removing two bolts to loosen the caliper then of course you need to loosen it off of uh, the bracket and the rotor and then you're going to need a few other items to help retract the piston. So here you can see I've got the Mini Cooper up on jack stands and I'm going to show you essentially the things that you're going to need to remove. This side here is going to be for US based cars the passenger side and uh, just discussing a few nomenclature items you have the wear sensor here and you can kind of tell it kind of runs all the way around here and it attaches into the brake pad. You're going to need to remove that. Uh, you can simply remove these lines here. It just simply comes off like this here. Uh, actually, you can't see, but there's a little clip that you have to undo to get this to open. And you can essentially pull this out. Now, here are here are the two bolts that holds the caliper into the bracket you have a 15 oh, I'm sorry I stand correct this is going to be a 13 this here is a 15 you have a top one here is the bottom one so you'll put your 15 in here put a 13 in here and you're going to uh, essentially break loose the bolt here you're going to remove both of these then this caliper is going to come off now the way that you want to do it is you're going to need to wedge a little um, tool like this here kind of like a pry bar and loosen it one here and one down here and this caliper will come off what I also recommend that you do is get like a, uh, a little one gallon bucket of something here to put your rotor, I'm sorry, your caliper onto it here so that it doesn't go anywhere. Now you will see that you have your emergency brake line right here. You do not have to disconnect it. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of this. I'll set it down so you guys can see at that point. You can see that I have loosened these bolts here and there's Loctite on them from Mini. So we'll go ahead and put these bolts aside. Now this caliper should come free. And again, you have to kind of use something like this to pry out the caliper. And this one is pretty easy to do. Now you do want to be very careful as you don't want to pull this completely out. I have already loosened this quite a bit. And then this should essentially shimmy on out. Work this other side here. Okay, and there you have the caliper is off. Now, so that is off. 
And here is your sensor. So this is a great example of my mistake here. As you guys can tell, I broke the line here and this sensor is no good anymore. Uh, an option that a lot of people have done, and this is personal preference, what you can do is you can just connect both of these lines together and then it becomes a closed looped system and then you'll have no issues. But again, uh, this was a great demonstration of not what to do. Uh, so try to remove this before you remove the caliper. Uh, now, I will go ahead and remove these pads here. Uh, you can see that my pads have quite a bit of life left. And the reason why I am changing them out is my driver's side had an issue that the pads wore very quickly. So instead of replacing just the driver's side, I'm replacing both of them. So we're gonna go ahead and um, replace these here. The next step in the process is to access your brake reservoir. You want to open it. My recommendation is to extract maybe 50 millimeters of fluid out of the reservoir because you're going to need to retract the rotors back. And what that's going to do, it's, it's going to end up pushing this fluid up and possibly out of the reservoir. So I would recommend again that you take out some fluid and have some extra brake fluid around to level this out once you're done. The next step is to retract this piston here. And ideally you want to have a service tool here. This one I bought from Harbor Freight. It's called the Maddox Brake um, Caliper Servicing Tool. And what it is, is it's just a device that looks like this that goes into these little grooves here like this. And what it does is when you're turning this back, it actually pushes on the piston and retracts it so that you can get it onto the rotor here. So all it does is it just sits right in here. And let's go ahead and we'll have to bring this back in a little. We'll line it up right about there. And from here, okay, so I got it nice and tight. And I'm going to turn this. And again, what it does is it spins the piston back like that. Make sure this is nice and tight. Okay. I'm going to step away to check the brake fluid from the reservoir. Brake fluid looks good. Nothing is coming out. We'll go ahead and continue to turn this. And once it reaches the very end, you will feel it stop. So we'll go ahead and just continue to turn this here. I'm going to once again, just tighten this really nicely here. All right. Okay, so you guys can tell I can't turn it anymore because the piston is completely retracted back. So now what we'll do, we'll loosen this here. You have a fully seated piston. Now it's time to put the new pads in. I went ahead and put the new pad in the back on. Now we'll go ahead and put this front one and all you essentially do is you're just going to slide it in like that. From here, uh, I use this caliper grease just around this area here as well as the middle for the contact of the piston. And then what we'll go ahead and do, we'll just put it on. Uh, I do want to point out real quick, this bolt here 
you're going to have to push in as well as this one to get this caliper on. So what we'll do, we'll push it in a little bit and then this one here a little bit and then you can see the caliper is on the bracket. We'll go ahead and put these bolts just to give a level of security before you torque it down. Okay, so that one is in. We'll go ahead and get this one here. Okay, all right. So from here, what you're going to do is the two bolts that you remove, you need to torque them down to 24 foot pounds. And obviously you're gonna have to hold it with a 15 millimeter wrench like this. And then with a torque device, torque it down again to 24. You'll go ahead and grab your sensor. And again, guys, this is the bypass. I don't really recommend that you guys do it this route, but I'm pretty good with my maintenance and staying on top of my vehicles that I'm not too worried about these pads going bad and not being able to know. But from here, for ones that you do replace, you're just gonna stick it right into uh, the brake pad slot. Uh, there is a little slot that this device will go in. So once again, this is on. We'll torque these down to 24 foot pounds. We'll double check the level of our brake fluid and we are essentially done with the pad change. I am done with the rear brake pad change on the Mini Cooper. And just to reiterate again, it was a very simplified process. Uh, the main overview, two bolts, obviously the wheel has to come off, two bolts to remove the caliper. Uh, and then you just kind of shimmy the caliper off. The most complicated part is the specialized tool that you will need to retract that piston back into the caliper. Now in the past, I have used a couple of needle nose pliers to kind of catch that groove of the piston to spin it in. But with the Mini Cooper, it just didn't work out very well. I was only able to get it in partially and I had to go and buy a specialized tool. Uh, this one retailed for $50 from Harbor Freight. I'll provide a link below for you guys so you can purchase it. And it's a universal kit that has many other connections that you can use on different cars, but you will need it. But other than that, um, that's essentially all that you really need for specialized tools. Once you are able to retract that piston, you can get those pads on, get the caliper um, back on, torque your two bolts that you removed and you are pretty much done at that point. Finalize that with making sure that your brake fluid is level because you may have to remove some of it when you're retracting that piston. But overall, very easy job to accomplish and I know you guys can do it. Please don't let a shop take you for two or $300 for the brake pad change. Um, I do want to add one final comment. You do need to make sure that you bed in your pads. That's going to be very crucial. Uh, a high level overview of bedding in the pads is to essentially mating the brake pad uh, onto your rotor. And the way that you properly do that is you're going to drive let's say 10, 15 minutes to get your brakes warmed up. And then you're gonna have to do a series of stops. The first series is going to be from essentially 30 to 40 miles to a slowdown. And you want to brake with roughly 50% braking force. What that does is it really heats up those brake pads. You're going to do that between five and seven times. Once you're done with that, you want to go ahead and do uh, pretty much a 90% braking force from about 60 to 70 miles an hour. 
um, and you want to do that also between five and seven times. Now, the final times or the final series that you do between the breaking from 60 to 70 to virtually zero, you don't want to get completely on ABS, but you want to provide a strong braking force to the point where you start smelling your brake pads burn. That is when you know that your pads have been very well bedded in. And again, take your time. It's not something that you want to rush, but it is something that you want to do. Many shops will not do that. And the first few times that you break with brand new pads, it's not gonna stop like you're accustomed to because those pads have not been bedded in. So make sure you do that as a final step in your pad change. As usual, my automotive fanatics, thank you for joining me for another DIY. I'm glad this one was a relatively simple and easy one to follow. This is going to be Peter, your automotive fanatic, signing off until the next time, my friends. <laughs>